Hello students, in today's video, I will give you the an overview about the layers of anterior abdominal wall. We will not discuss the detail of these wall. I am just giving the orientation that when you will do the dissection, how the layers will appear one by one. So let us see this video first. Now when you will have the anterior abdominal wall, you have to understand that this is your skin. Now you have very important landmark on the skin is umbilicus. Now when you are doing the dissection, you will make a midline cut and you have to bypass this umbilicus as an important landmark. And when you will remove the skin, deep to the skin, you will find a fatty layer. And this fatty layer is uniformly present and the fatty layer is known as the camper's fascia or fascia camper. Now if you will remove this skin, deep to the skin, you will find one more membranous layer and that is known as fascia scarpa. But my dear students, that fascia scarpa is not well developed in the upper part. Now here you can see once you will remove and you will remove the fat, you will find that the fascia scarpa is well developed in the lower part, which you can see here. Now this is a well developed fascia scarpa in the lower part below the umbilicus. So this is an important thing to understand that fascia scarpa is not well developed in the upper part of anterior wall, it is well developed in the lower part. So fascia camper and fascia scarpa layers are well visible in the lower part. Then you will find there is a presence of the superficial epigastric vessels and these superficial epigastric vessels are running here. Now when you will see on the sides, you can see that on the sides you will find a outer muscle is external oblique and in the midline you will have a linear alba on the both side of linear alba, first you are able to see a layer and this thick layer is known as anterior wall of rectus sheath. Now when you will cut this anterior wall of rectus sheath, you will find a rectus abdominis. So on the sides, if you will remove the external oblique, deep to that you will find one more muscle and the direction is the right angle to the external oblique and this muscle is your internal oblique. Now when you will remove the internal oblique deep to that you will find one more muscle and this muscle is the transversely placed fibers is transversus abdominis. Now when you will remove the transversus abdominis you will find a thin layer of the fascia is fascia transversalis. Now here also you can see I have removed the linear alba so you can see the fascia transversalis is present throughout and deep to the fascia transversalis you are having a layer is known as preperitoneal fat and then you are visible able to appreciate the parietal peritoneum. So my dear students, whenever you are doing the dissection on the side, you will find the muscles. But if you will do the paramedian dissection, you have to first remove this anterior layer of rectus sheath, then you have to remove the rectus abdominis and behind the rectus abdominis, you will find these epigastric arteries. This is a superior epigastric artery, this is an inferior epigastric artery. So epigastric superior inferior epigastric arteries are visible behind your rectus abdominis. So dear students, whenever you are doing the dissection in anterior abdominal wall, what are the layers? The layers are different in the side as well as in the paramedian. Why? Because this is the lateral border of the rectus abdominis which is known as linea semilunaris. So after the linea semilunaris, you are having the rectus sheath which is formed by the aponeurosis of the three layers which are present lateral to the linea semilunaris. So on the lateral side, you are having the external oblique, internal oblique and transverse abdominis which ends at this lateral border or linea semilunaris. After this lateral border, you have the rectus sheath and this rectus sheath encloses the muscle is known as rectus abdominis. Now, if you will see this part, what you are able to understand that this is your anterior wall and if you will see the anterior wall from the behind, what I did is that I removed your posterior part of the vertebral column and you know that these are the posterior free border of your anterior wall muscle and this gap is filled by the paravertebral muscle. So we have removed the posterior part of the vertebral column and we have removed the paravertebral muscle and now you are able to see this anterior abdominal wall from behind. Now from behind you are able to see this is a fascia transversalis 
and this fascia transfer cellus is uniformly covering the inner side of your abdominal cavity and when you will remove the fascia transfer cellus you can see this is a posterior wall of the rectus sheath now here you have to understand that this posterior wall of rectus sheath is deficient at one point and below that you can directly appreciate the rectus abdominis and this is known as arcuate line so what is arcuate line arcuate line is present on the posterior wall of the anterior abdomen and below the arcuate line you don't have the rectus sheath and this area is formed by your fascia transfer cellus now you are having a pelvic organ inside his urinary bladder from the apex of urinary bladder you are having a connection which is going to the umbilicus and this connection is known as urecus what is that urecus and this urecus obliterated and if it will persist patient is having the leakage of the urine through the umbilicus so my dear students when we will place the urinary bladder you are able to see this urecus and this urecus is a obliterated part now on the sides you will find the two arteries these are the umbilical arteries and these umbilical arteries are also going along with the posterior side of your rectus wall and these arteries are carrying your deoxygenated blood in the fetal life and these arteries are also concentrating on the umbilicus clear now next to that if you will have you will have the two arteries and those arteries are known as your inferior epigastric arteries and these inferior epigastric arteries are the branches of external iliac arteries and they are also seen on the posterior side of your anterior abdominal wall and here you can see that this inferior epigastric artery enters into the posterior side of your rectus sheath clear and now we have placed the fascia transfer cellus so once you will place the fascia transfer cellus suppose you are having the endoscope inside the abdominal cavity you are able to see these structure through the peritoneum because this fascia transfer cellus is having one more inner layer and that is known as parietal peritoneum clear so through the parietal peritoneum if you will put the endoscope inside the abdominal cavity you are able to see all these three structures now here you can see that what i am talking about that now we have placed the parietal peritoneum here now once you will place the parietal peritoneum now you can see the folds now formed by the peritoneum and they are now considered as a peritoneal fold so this is your median umbilical fold then you will have medial umbilical fold and then you will have lateral umbilical fold so this median umbilical fold is formed by the urecus the medial umbilical folds are formed by obliterated umbilical artery and the lateral umbilical folds formed by your inferior epigastric artery so when you will see the posterior most uh, view of anterior abdominal wall inside the abdominal cavity first you will find these folds of the peritoneum anterior to the fold we will have the fascia transfer cellus clear now in the lower part of anterior abdominal wall if you will see you will find that this external oblique muscle is going downward and its aponeurosis is going to form your inguinal canal and in this lower part of the inguinal canal you are having a small gap and this gap which is visible here is known as superficial inguinal ring so this is the first question that superficial inguinal ring is a defect in answer is here you can see it is a defect in the aponeurosis of external oblique apon aponeurosis so it is a defect in the external oblique aponeurosis now if you will see that how this ring is formed so you have to check the folding of the lower end of your aponeurosis so this aponeurosis is showing the folding and this curvature or the folding is going to form your inguinal ligament and the anterior end of the ligament is uh, this aponeurosis is showing your defect is superficial inguinal ring clear now this is your two other muscles of anterior abdominal wall and deep to that you are able to see one more ring now if you will remove the anterior abdominal wall aponeurosis what you are able to understand that you are seeing this is the curvature of inferior oblique and transverse abdominis and medial end of their attachment is known as conjoint tendon so this is your conjoint tendon and from the conjoint tendon you are having these uh, arch fibers of your internal oblique and transverse abdominis which are going posteriorly 
and deep to that you can see that this opening is visible and this is a defect in the fascia transversalis and this defect is known as deep inguinal ring. So when you are doing the dissection layer by layer you have to understand that there are superficial and deep rings. Superficial ring is a defect in the external oblique aponeurosis while this deep ring is a defect in this fascia transversalis. So the contents will enter from the deep ring, passes through this inguinal canal and then they exit through the superficial inguinal ring. Clear? So this is an important thing about the anterior abdominal wall that anterior abdominal wall is having the layers of the three muscles and deep to that you will have the fascia transversalis. In the lower part of the fascia transversalis you are having a small opening is known as deep inguinal ring and there is a superficial inguinal ring which is actually a aperture or a opening into the external oblique muscle. Clear? So my dear students at the end of this session now you are able to understand how many layers are there in the anterior abdominal wall from superficial to deep you will have skin then you will have fascia camper, fascia scarpa, external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis muscles then you will have the transverse alis fascia then you will have preperitoneal fat and parietal peritoneum and when you will see inside of anterior abdominal wall the peritoneum will show the folds and these folds are known as umbilical ligament one is a midline ligament that is median then you will have the medial umbilical ligament and then you will have the lateral umbilical ligaments so this is all about the session thank you